Good morning, good evening, and good night, everybody. My name is Sarah, and it feels weird to be filming in my Camp Half Blood shirt, but I just got done with a live stream over on Hazel the Writer's YouTube channel, and I didn't feel like changing. So if you're interested in Percy Jackson live streams, go over there. And if you're interested in me talking about books, stay over here, because today we're talking about my July wrap-up. So July was kind of a very weird reading month for me. Um, I was reading a ton because I was doing a Full Metal Alchemist readathon. I'll talk about that in a bit. But also, it's like I I stopped reading like halfway through the month. I got to like July twentieth, and I just kind of like didn't read at all. Like not even fan fiction. Like, I just kind of I just stopped, which is. The weirdest thing, because I normally love consuming content, and I didn't even, I didn't listen to podcasts, I barely listened to music, I didn't read, like, not physical or audio or fan fiction, and I'm just like, I just didn't do it. Like, what happened to those last ten days? I don't know. But I still got through a ton of stuff, and I still completed the readathon, so, with that all being said, let's just dive on in. Like, every month I do a readathon, and I will actually be organizing my books by what prompts they were, and instead of, like, the order I read them. So the Full Metal Alchemist readathon is a readathon inspired by the anime slash manga series Full Metal Alchemist. I love this series. However, halfway through uh, doing this readathon, I realized I never actually completed the series. I've never gotten past season three, so I binged watch all the way up to season three, and then I, and then I stopped watching. I stopped consuming content, so... We're stuck there again. I still don't know what happens at the end. Well, I kind of do. I've been exposed to a lot of spoilers, so I, I know what happens, but I don't really know what happens. I completed the readathon anyways, though, and I, I did that because it's such an awesome readathon, and yeah. There are two different paths you could take to do this readathon because there's two different brothers. They have the same journey, though they experience it differently. So you could choose the Elfons, or you could choose the Edward path. I chose Edward because... I had books that fit that prompt. So prompt number one was training. Read a book that has characters that have to travel to a different location to reach their goals. I reread Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, book one, The Sword of Summer. I love Magnus Chase so much, and I felt like it was weird that I hadn't reread it yet, considering this is one of my favorite series out there. And while rereading it, a couple things happened. First of all, I realized that the first book is kind of my least favorite of the series. It's still amazing, but it definitely it takes time before it gets into like the proper, this is my favorite thing ever. Second of all, I tried dual reading this with like having an audiobook going on while I followed along with the book. I hated the narrator in that audiobook. I hated him so much, I just gave up on the audiobook. And then my mother, who wanted to read my favorite series, picked up that audiobook, and she only had time to listen to audiobooks. She doesn't have time to read a physical copy. And she hated that narrator as well, to the point where it ruins the story for her. So I love this book dearly, but please, please do not pick up the audiobook for this. This is amazing, this is wonderful. It is a little slow in the start, but it's just, it's, it, hmm. That, uh, that narrator, that narrator was awful. For those of you who don't know, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard is the next series in the Percy Jackson universe. You meet Percy Jackson in book three, but overall he is not a part of this. Magnus is Annabeth's cousin, however, he is descended from the Norse gods. Like, it sets up in the very first chapter that Magnus, our main character, dies, and the story is following him through Valhalla. Valhalla is the Norse afterlife for the honored dead, for the great warriors who are one day going to fight in Ragnarok, and it's, it's so cool and it's so awesome, and it's all about these characters trying to prevent Ragnarok, because even though it's coming one day, they don't want it to be tomorrow. So upon reread, I continue to give this book four stars. It's great and amazing. However, the start is very slow. It doesn't really pick up speed until they die, go to Valhalla, and then leave Valhalla to go on their journey. Like, it's, it's, I don't like the first little section. Once they get on their travels, it's great, but not until then. Prompt number two, Human Transmutation. Read a book that has a cover revamp. I picked Dragon Song. This is a classic old series. It has gone through a couple different covers. This is kind of the standard vibe, though. Girl on the Beach with fire lizards. In this world, there are dragons, and then there's fire lizards. Fire lizards are tiny, cute, adorable things that aren't really dragons, but they kind of are, but they aren't. In the world that this book takes place in, there's things that fall from the sky that can basically kill anyone and anything. They're called spren. They destroy crops. They destroy humanity. And so dragons are tasked to be the ones to go up and burn all the spren to make sure no one gets hurt, that humanity can continue living. Our main character one day, she realizes that the situation that she's in in her family home is not good. Like, it's, it's very much not good. It spends so much time in this book describing how bad her home life is. One day, she just runs away from all that. She just leaves and doesn't go back. And when she eventually leaves her home, she finds a place among the fire lizards, and there she's taken care of. There she is honored and protected, even though these are animals that aren't quite as high as dragons in this world. She is somehow among them, and she is somehow the key 
to bringing about more knowledge of the dragons later on in the series. It's a very short book. There's not a lot going on besides the fact that horrible home life, leaving home life. They spent so much time in this very short book, however, discussing how bad her home life was. It really, it really turned me off. You guys know I hate books that have bad home lives and that I don't like abusive situations, either mental, physical, or emotional. It's just, if I have a book where the family isn't like loving and caring and just amazing or even supportive, I usually drop the book, however, because my dad recommended this series so much to me, I had to pick it up. I pushed through it. I really did enjoy it in the end. It just, it was, it was a rough beginning. So yeah, I did give this book four stars, but please note there's an asterisk on that for not, it's like, it's, it's trigger warning, it's content warning. That asterisk is there because, ew. Moving on to prompt number three of this readathon, certification to read a book with a test or a competition in it. I picked volume three of The Adventure Zone, Pedal to the Metal. Now this volume, like as you can probably tell by the cover, is a little bit different than the volumes that you've seen before. In this one, our D&D adventure crew has somehow ended up in a race, like a car race. I don't really want to give too much away about what happens in this book because it is volume three. The Adventure Zone is, it started off as a podcast, so it's now being published as graphic novels. It is a story about the D&D campaign of Taco, Merlin, not Merlin, Merlin, and Magnus Burnside. They are my favorite characters. Uh, I don't, I have a very limited reach of my D&D content, and this is one of my favorites out there. And the adventures that they go on, the first one is very basic D&D. You meet the goblins, you meet the enemy, you do the things. And then volume two, it's like, oh, you, you have a task now. There's an overarching narrative now. And then you also get like sort of a murder mystery on a train thing. And then this one is a car race. Well, they call it a wagon race, but it's obviously cars and motorcycles. It's very cool. So yes, obviously I love this a lot. It fit the pumps great with the car race stuff. And there's also the fact that two side characters that get introduced in this volume are an adorable lesbian romance, and I love it so much. Did I say I gave this five stars? It should be obvious. I don't normally write graphic novels in the manga because I don't feel like there was a complete story, but Adventure Zone does a really good job about having a complete story in each volume, so I gave this version Five stars. Next prompt to read is Truth, to start a new series or read a standalone. I picked Naomi or Naoma, I'm still not entirely certain how to pronounce the name of this. This is another graphic novel. I've been really into graphic novels recently, which is weird because I normally don't like them, but this is a story about basically the sidekick of a villain, and it's just so cool and amazing. Our main character is a shapeshifter as she kind of goes off and does chaos. There's kind of a very interesting dynamic between the villain and the main character who is the sidekick because the sidekick is actually so much worse as a villain than the actual villain. Like, she is the one who's like, I, why, why don't we kill them? Why don't we steal everything? I can turn into a dragon. We can beat this easily. And then the villain, her mentor, is like, no, that's not how this is done. We're gonna, we're gonna do these the correct way. Like, there's a proper way to be a villain. And I think it's really cool and really amazing. This is a standalone. I love it. There is also the fact that there is a relationship between the villain and the hero who is working for whatever organization like they're trying to fight against. You can see the backstory of their relationship sprinkled through this and like it's it's really not even that long and it packs so much in here and the amount of character development our main character gets and you understand her backstory and how it's like I can't spoil it, but this is really good, and I love the art style. It took a little took a little bit to get used to, but I loved the art style in this. Also, I forgot to mention, the art style in this volume, which is volume three, it has improved so much since volume one of uh, Venture Zone, because I went back to, like, look through volume one, because I was comparing it to the podcast, and, like, first of all, they definitely, they made it a lot more family-friendly, because there's some jokes in the podcast I was re-listening to that are not at all uh, family appropriate, but like I also noticed how much, like in volume one, there wasn't too much like going on in background wise, like the characters were well drawn and stuff, but like volume three really sets it up a notch, it's amazing. So yes, uh, both of these are great. Uh, for some reason I decided to pick up two graphic novels this month, which is really rare for me, but I love them both dearly. I also gave this one five stars, by the way, so yeah. The next prompt is hot-headed brat. Read a book with a hot head character or a character with a temper. So uh, the book I read for this is The Storm Runner, which is a Rick Riordan Presents book. So in the synopsis, it describes our main character as hot-headed, and I didn't really feel like that carried through the novel. Like, yes, obviously our character is impulsive. He's a, he's a kid. He tends to be like that. He does have a little bit of a temper, but I don't think it really... It didn't really live up to, like, the hot-headed brat that I was expecting to be given the synopsis. So this book is set in New Mexico and deals with the Mayan mythology. Our main character, I do want to specifically point out that he has a limp, he has a cane, one of his legs is shorter than the other. So I absolutely love that representation in this book. Like, you never see characters with canes, and that's just, it's such a huge 
It's very important for me that that is out there. Um, and so that alone made me enjoy this book so much. I do want to say it is a little too much formulaic in terms of like what you expect of a Rick Riordan book. Uh, it deals with the fact like, oh, you're a, the son of a god. And it even sets up the fact that the gods made a pact to never have children. They called them godborns in this book instead of demigods or half-bloods. Like I could tell what beats were coming next because I'm so used to Rick Riordan books. Like Magnus Chase, Heroes of Olympus, Percy Jackson, it very much took a lot of inspiration from specifically Percy Jackson, but a lot of the other books as well. I haven't reread, I just realized I haven't reread the Kane Chronicles in basically forever. I have no idea where my copies are. Uh, that's a tangent for next month. But I just, I loved this book, specifically the Storm Runners, because it dealt with a mythology I'm not very used to. Honestly, my biggest disappointment was it was too close to Percy Jackson, which I'm not even sure that's a bad thing, because it had things I liked in it. It had things I expected, I enjoyed. I'm like, yes, this is good. But it's kind of that too much of a good thing feeling, like I knew what was coming next and while well, I knew I was going to enjoy it, it just, it didn't quite feel right. It's, I know there's more in this series and I know it continues on and I really hope that the author finds their own stride and writes their own way instead of taking like, oh, this is a Rick Riordan Presents books, it must feel like a Rick Riordan book. No, it needs to feel like a mythology book. And it does and it's great and amazing, but I only gave it four stars because I'm just like, it's a little, it's a little too close to what I'm used to. Also, like, the whole plot point of this is, like, the, the god of death is accidentally freed or whatever. And I just, I don't like it when death gods are the bad guys. That's a personal thing. And I know it's very much my mythology, from what we understand it, the god of death was not a good guy. But I'm like, I want more, like, soft Hades content. Can I have that, please? No? Okay. All right, all right, we're moving on to the next prompt, Battle of the Homunculi. Read a book that represents one of the seven deadly sins. For this prompt, I chose Spinning Silver. Now, Spinning Silver is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling set in sort of a fantasy Russia. Our main character is from a Jewish family of moneylenders. However, the problem is her dad is not a good moneylender. He doesn't take back the money he lends out. And so while everyone around them is living in wealth or at very least a comfortable lifestyle, her family is stuck in poverty. And so one day our main character decides, no, my mother is sick and my father is refusing to do anything about that to get the money we need to help her. I'm going to take over the family business. And our main character gets like really good at this to the point where she can brag that she can turn silver to gold. And of course, someone hears her and it, that someone is the local fae, the local fae of winter who will do anything to get gold. And so the story continues off from there. It's like the Rumpel Stiltskin, like you must prove to me three times that you can turn silver to gold. And then afterwards, I will take you as my bride. And there's other perspectives that we meet along the way that deal with other characters and other storylines, but they all somehow intertwine in the end in the most amazing and wonderful way. I gave this book five stars. This is amazing. This is wonderful. And it's just, it's really good. So um, I feel like I'm going to have to cut some of my words I just said right there because that's definitely going to be somehow a spoiler. But I just want to give a shout out to what this book did for character development and relationships. And I was not expecting to enjoy what this book did, but it was amazing. And it was, it was really the more of the fact that it caught me completely off guard with how good it was that got it a five stars, probably close to 4.5. But the fact that it did something that I was not expecting and it pulled it off correctly, it bumped it up to a five. And now going into the last prompt, regain what was lost. Read a book with one of the following, found self, found item, or found family. I picked My Hero Academia Volume 24. This is the volume that focuses almost entirely on the villain story. And the villain story really is a found family story because all these characters come from different walks of life and somehow they find each other and they find a way to just, I don't want to say it's a healthy relationship, but I'm mostly talking about twice and like the way that his character develops throughout the story. My Hero Academia is a story about a world where basically everyone has superpowers and our main character wants to become a superhero or whatever. But this volume focuses on the villains and I loved it. One of my friends really doesn't like the villains and so she didn't like this volume at all. But honey, this was amazing. Now, like I said, I don't normally rate manga because they're not a complete story. This is not a complete arc. There is not... You don't get to see the beginning or the ending in this volume, but the stuff that goes down here, it was great. And so while technically I only read books this month for the readathon, and that was all of the prompts for the readathon, I do want to say I had one more book's I DNF'd, and that's Carnival. Uh, I feel like I'm going to get hate for this because I know the Carnival fandom is very passionate, but I, I couldn't read it. Like, it wasn't the fact that it was, it was bad. It was more the fact it had very flowery, very... 
not dyslexic friendly writing. It's the best way to put it. If you watched my last video about being a dyslexic reader, I kind of explained the fact that I don't like flowery writing because it makes it very difficult for me to understand and process what is going on. And so this book, it was not good for that. It was not good for me. It made things very difficult. Even in the first chapter, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to read this at all because it goes into talking about a character seeing the color blue when she felt sadness. And I don't I don't understand that, and I know it's just meant like, oh, it's a metaphor, it makes things sound pretty, but I don't like it. I don't, I, I can't read it. So yeah, I DNF the story. Normally I like the idea of magical circuses. This is a story about a magical circus competition thing that's going on, and I tried reading it, but I can't. Nothing to do with the story itself, more with the writing style, and that was difficult. So that has been every book I read for the month of July, all the books I read for the Full Metal Alchemist Readathon. I highly recommend you guys go watch that show. Well, I recommend you go watch Brotherhood, which is the story that's uh, told in the manga. Okay, Full Metal Alchemist was a manga, and then they turned it into the anime, but then the anime ended before the manga, so like they had different endings, and so they decided to completely go back and redo the entire series, which is amazing, so... You know, that's great. And as much as I want to gush about Full Metal Alchemist, I really shouldn't because I haven't completed the series, which is a shame on me. So ignoring that, thank you guys all so much for watching. If you like this video or want to talk about any of the books I've read, please leave that down in the comment section down below. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And as always, good night, good evening, and good morning, everybody.